Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Mark Roberti, and this is the podcast for entrepreneurs who are looking for the breakthrough for their businesses. When it comes to starting a podcast, you really open the door to a lot of great opportunities because you get to build a lot of healthy relationships. You get to interview people, uh, acquire a lot of knowledge. There's so many benefits to it, but in order to turn your podcast into a profitable enterprise, you need to achieve massive growth for that podcast now instead of later. And that is what we are going to focus on in this episode. Today's guest has been named a top eight podcaster to watch in 2018 by Inc.com and chosen as an icon of influence in the new media space. He not only speaks to organizations on how to overcome adversity and utilize podcasting to grow your business, but he helps others launch and grow their own podcast with beginpodcastingnow.com. His vision is to teach the world how to live happy no matter where they are today. And his mantra is that it's about the journey, not the destination. Today's guest for episode 141 of the, of the Breakthrough Success Podcast is none other than Justin Shank. Justin, it is such a pleasure to have you on the show. Mark, I'm, I'm beyond excited about this conversation, man. Thank you so much for uh, that intro, which is really cool. And and actually, the biggest thank you is thank you for saying my last name correctly, um, because I've grown up my whole entire life with everybody pronouncing it wrong, and you got it correct. So thank you. <laughs> My pleasure, Justin. And um, I mean, I do have a uh, like sometimes like uh, like a, a name, something that is really important. So um, uh, I wish I could say that I've gotten it right all the time, but I'm happy that I was able to get your name right. And um, well, I mean, I'm really excited to go into this interview. But uh, before we do that, I'd love to get some backstory. So I want to ask about your backstory for two things. So uh, first, like, why did you start the Growth Now movement, and why do you get into podcasting also? Yeah, man. Uh, so it's it's kind of a longer story. So 2000 and 2009, I started a, a business with a business partner of mine um, called Jetbug, and we put together seminars and expos that focused on personal and professional growth. Uh, and about a year in, we started calling the the seminars the Growth Now seminars. Um, so there's been a long history of me wanting to help other people kind of get to where they want to go, helping them reach their goals, whatever their goals may be. I just want to be able to kind of help them kind of bridge the gap. Um, and so we had this business that did really well for about two years. Uh, and we decided to take every single dime that we made and put it into a business expo. We paid a speaker a lot of money to come talk. Um, we spent, you know, almost double what we were going to pay the speaker. We spent that on advertising uh, and we ended up selling three tickets to the event. So needless to say, it kind of shut the doors on that business. We lost everything. Um, but at the time, you know, my business partner and I still had day jobs. And, you know, uh, we were able to kind of just go back to our jobs. And, and both him and I got super successful in the careers that we were having at that point. I was in medical sales. Um, and uh, and we kind of just kind of rode that along for a couple of years. And then a couple of years later, him and I were, were sitting around. We were actually drinking a, a glass of scotch. And, and we're like, you know, it's really weird. People keep still ask us to this day, years later, are we still doing that thing? Um, and we're like, we clearly, clearly did something that resonated with, um, you know, the people and, and, and uh, people of our community and beyond. And, and so we decided to, to launch a podcast because podcasting, the, the podcast itself, you know, launched about two years ago and, and it was just kind of becoming a thing then. And we're like, let's just, let's just put a podcast out there. We had no expectations. Uh, we, we committed to 52 episodes, no matter what happens, whether it's one download or 10 million downloads, we committed to one episode. Um, and, and we took off from there. So uh, long story short, uh, it was a journey of ups and downs and failures. And that led to, to the podcast. Justin, thank you for sharing that story of how you got started. And it's interesting how, uh, people had continued asking you, like, is the, are you still doing this? Because, um, uh, when you have people asking you if you're still doing something like that is a telltale sign that people are interested in this uh, project and this work that you're doing. So uh, it's good that you're able to get that level of uh, excitement around the idea. And one of the things about growing a podcast is that uh, it's important to set that foundation early on. Uh, this is obviously true for like any growth, but um. 
for podcasting in general, what do you see as the essentials for laying down that strong foundation for podcast growth? Yeah, man. I think for me, it's it's definitely it's definitely about authenticity. Uh, that's step one. Like you have to be yourself, no matter who you're interviewing. And I mean, I've interviewed Super Bowl champions, TV celebrities, you know, Olympic medalists, and, and I've always been myself. And 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 this is why I kind of relate the two. So I used to have a co-host uh, who I had mentioned earlier. Uh, it was for the first, I think, 62 episodes. I had a co-host, uh, and there was very minimal growth. We weren't really doing very well. Uh, and then when I asked him to take a step back, everything started to explode. And here's why. The branding that we had for the podcast and the idea and and the purpose behind it was mine, right? So I came up with that. Uh, And so when I was talking, it made sense. And then all of a sudden, there was this second voice that would kind of chime in. And not that he was saying anything wrong. It wasn't matching up with the branding. Um, And so when I asked him to take a step back, everything started to flow a little bit more. The interviews started to flow a little bit better. There was more authenticity in the conversations. I mean, people I was interviewing started to cry when I was interviewing them, uh, which is kind of mind blowing. Uh, but, but what I found was when you're being your authentic self and that brand is matching your authentic self, people will start to latch onto that. I interviewed, interviewed a guy named Preston Smiles who, who says something in one of his motivational videos that he has out there, which is at any given time, in this world, there are 75,000 people that need to hear your message from you. So if you think about that, the sheer numbers of that, right? Um, and, and so when I started to talk about my message and authentically while I was interviewing these people and just connecting with my guests, my audience started to connect too. And they started to stick around. They started to share it out. Uh, and then the accolades started to come. And um, when you were talking about how you've interviewed these uh, like Olympians, uh, TV celebrities, uh, one of the um, things with being a podcast host is that sometimes you have the honor of interviewing one of your role models. And uh, you mentioned that you're always able to stay yourself uh, during these situations. So um, how do you continue to uh, stay yourself um, when you're interviewing anyone on your show and also in comparison to, for instance, when one of your big role models uh, decides to be a guest on the show? You know, that that's a journey. That was, that's been a lifelong journey for me. Um, you know, I growing up, my mom had a 20 year pill addiction and my dad spent some time in jail. And, and if I had to like if there was a senior superlative in high school for least likely to succeed, that would be me. Like you're a v- beyond successful, soon to be 20 books written, you know, entrepreneur at the age of I, I, you're very young. I think you're still a teenager, right? Uh, I'm just I'm 20 now. OK, so you're 20 now. So no longer a teenager, but you're 20. Uh, dude, when I was 17, 16 years old, like I had my my so my junior year of high school had a 1.7 GPA. Um, and, and so that was due to a lot of hardships, not cause I'm dumb. It was just due to a lot of hardships that were going on and I didn't focus on school. Um, but the journey of this was I then, because of all the stuff that was going on, I tried to be somebody I wasn't, uh, and everything was kind of falling apart around me. Uh, and then when I latched on this idea of like, this is who I am, I'm proud of who I am. And you know, you're either going to like me or you're not. Uh, when I started to do that, I realized that everything else in my life started to make sense. My friends became better. Uh, my relationships became better. My family life became better. Um, and I was like, wow, this is really interesting. Um, and so I decided in, in a certain moment in my life that I'm going to be authentically myself no matter what, no matter who it is, no matter if it's the CEO or the janitor, whether it's a, the, the biggest TV star in the world or if it's my neighbor, I'm going to give 100% of myself to that person. Um, and they're, it, they're, they're either going to like it or they're not. And that's okay. If they don't like me, that's fine. Like there's probably people listening to your show right now that are like, I don't like this guy. I'm, I'm stopping and I'm, I'm not going to listen anymore. And that's okay. But this is just who I am. Right. Um, and I found that there's great power in that. So about three months before I launched the podcast, uh, my mom passed away. She lost her battle to the addiction. It was like the worst day of my life. I mean, it's the worst moment of my life. It was the worst months of my life and, and everything. Um, she, she was the most amazing person I've ever met. And what I learned from my mom is that if you're able to give 100% of yourself to everybody, no matter who they are, you will always win. Uh, because you can't be selfish in anything, man. Like I, I, I bring these cool guests on my show um, and the end of it is not about – about me. It's about them. And so many times I see podcasters go out and they reach out to these big names and they're like, please be on my show, blah, blah, blah. And the reason they're reaching out is so they can grow their audience. 
And these people know it. But the reason I reach out is because I feel like I add value to their life. And no matter what that is, whether that's them being on my show, meaning like it'll grow their brand um, or, hey, I might have an idea to help you. Right. And so, you know, actually just last night I interviewed a reality TV star and I'm actually driving to New Jersey next week to go have dinner with him. Oh, wow. But that was because in that interview, I was authentically myself. And I think once you start to accept that, like you just bring yourself to every conversation 100 percent, you'll start to see the rewards. And it's the easiest thing to do no matter who you're talking to. It's really exciting when you're able to build a really strong relationship like that and then uh, meet the person face to face. Uh, instead of screen to screen, I mean, um, that's the type of relationships you're able to build with a podcast. I mean, um, I'm going like the first time I'll really experience that is uh, well, I've, I've experienced that once before, but I feel like like I'm going to podcast movement. So that's going to be like the true experience for me where like I meet a lot of people who I interviewed. So I feel like that's going to be really exciting. It's something that you're able to do when you build all these healthy relationships. But uh, going back to growing the podcast because you can have all these uh, episodes, but if no one's seeing them, then you're not uh, making a lot of revenue. So how do we get more people to promote our episodes? Because I know there are things we can do to promote, but we uh, can only do so much. So how do we get more people to help out with promoting the episodes? Yeah. So you're thinking to yourself like, oh, I have my Instagram. I have my Facebook. I can push it out through there, but I'm not reaching a new audience because I have my followers and my followers. I'm not gaining any new followers that way. Um, and so what I've realized in my time in podcasting is that there's a number of ways to grow your audience. So one way is to be a guest on other shows, um, whether that show has 100 downloads an episode or whether that show has 10,000 you know, downloads an episode. Um, you know, That's a great way to kind of grow your audience because you're already tapping into um, you know, people that already listen to podcasts, like that's one hurdle. Like, how do I get to people that listen to podcasts? Well, being a guest on another podcast means the people listening, listen to podcasts. The second thing is you're not going to go on a show that doesn't make sense for you. Right. So like I'm a business self-help podcast, you're a business podcast. I'm going to come on your show because your audience is very similar to my audience. Um, and if I say something that might resonate or click with them, they'll kind of come over and check me out. If they like me, they'll stick around. So that's one way. Another way is to get published. Um, so the ink article grew my audience fourfold. So four X, it four X my audience overnight, um, because I was labeled an ink one time. Uh, so there's other ways on a lower scale. You can do that. And that's by guest blogging for other bloggers. Like the thing is when people start blogging and they're blogging on a daily basis, and you might know this, Mark, the people are, are blogging on a daily basis. They, they're starving for content. They're starving for people to guest write in their blogs. And so if you reach out to these blogs that might focus on you know, personal development or business or young entrepreneurs in your case, um, and you say, hey, I have this article. I'd love to guest blog on your, on your, on your uh, blog. They're usually going to say yes as long as the content's good. Uh, and then you're reaching out to their audience because I found that people who read blogs also listen to podcasts. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's so, uh, interesting. And yeah, so those are just two simple ways that somebody's able to kind of grow their audience. I mean, now that I think of it, I mean, it, it's I never really thought of it as people who read blogs also listen to podcasts, but it makes sense because it's consuming free content that has a self-education side to it. And I mean, you can read blog posts, you can't read them while driving and situations like that are where the podcasts come in handy. So I, mean, I never really thought about that connection, but and now I definitely see how that works. Exactly. And YouTube and television does not translate into podcasting. And actually, there's a, a perfect example of that. You, do you know who Lewis Howes is? Yes, I know, I know who he is. Yeah, so Lewis Howes, he hosts the, the, the uh, School of Greatness podcast. Um, he was on Ellen three times. And he had a short jump up in his statistics, but it went right back to where it was because people who watch Ellen don't listen to podcasts. It's a completely different kind of content. It's a completely different media. Um, and usually visual learners, people who would like watching television, aren't going to relate to audio. Interesting. Yeah. And I mean, that brings a very important point, which is getting listeners to stick around. So, I mean, we could see like a lot more uh, people – uh, listening, but then if we get the spike, it goes up and then it goes back down to where it was or drops. I mean, uh, you want to be able to retain any of your new listeners. So how do you recommend getting listeners to 
stick around and continue listening to your episodes? So that's a really hard question to answer, like as a, an overall broad spectrum. So I'll, I'll kind of talk about mine, right? So the purpose of my, my podcast is to talk about inspiring stories of growth. And a lot of times this is very emotional roller coaster, bringing you back down to the worst day of your life or the worst moment of your life. Um, and so my job as the host is to tell a story through somebody else. Uh, and so what I do is I guide these people through the story of their life and I hit harder in the moments that I feel would impact my audience. So you have to know the audience that wants to stick around. Now, every time I spike up because something happens, there's always a drop off because you're not going to keep everybody. But the important part is keeping the people that you need to keep because I don't care how big your listening that your listening audience is. It depends on how deep you are with that listening audience. Um, I would much rather have a deep connection with 15,000 downloads an episode than have a, a not a deep connection with a million downloads an episode. Because it means my impact is much greater than anything else. I'm not somebody who's money driven. Um, and so for me, it's really about giving content that makes sense to my brand. And the people that find me and wander to me, majority of them stick around because I stay true to the fact that this is my brand. This is the story I'm trying to tell. This is how I get this out of my, my guest. And then I put it out. Justin, I really love, I mean, those are a lot of great ideas. Um, and uh, to just, I mean, that retention is just so important. And I mean, as mentioned before, if you're getting these listeners, but they're not sticking around, that's going to be a problem for the show and being able to continue it. And uh, one of the things that uh, happens when we pursue a goal, like for some people, it could be growing a podcast. Uh, for others, it could be something else. Uh, but when it comes to goals, some people feel like they're being held back by something. And uh, I'm wondering if you could share with us what you believe holds most people back from reaching their full potential. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a really good question. Um, I think, I mean, if I had to generalize it, I would say fear. Um, and, and that could be fear of failure or fear of success. So I used to talk on something from stage um, called about fear of success and how when you are reaching towards your goals, there's this ultimate fear of if I reach them, what what am I next? You know, am I going to lose my friends? Am I going to lose my family? Uh, what's what's next after that? Am I going to be happy if I actually get there? Because right now the chase is something that I'm looking for. So I think fear is something that's real um, and and really holds people back from kind of reaching that next level. Um, but more than anything, um, I think that if people are, are able to embrace that fear, you know, and, and really feel those feelings of like, why am I really afraid? What are these butterflies about? What am I really afraid of? They realize that the the benefits much outweigh the negative, right? So the positive much outweighs the negative. Um, and so it's I'm really about embracing that fear as you go forward because what is there to lose? If you're if you're still alive, you still have a mission and you still have a purpose that you need to live and you need to you need to give back in some way, shape, or form. Um, and so as long as I'm breathing, I'm I'm reaching and I'm trying to reach that next goal. And if I'm stagnant, dude, like what good is that to me, right? So there's a quote that I love, and it's called, what's not growing is dead. And I think that's so true. So I wake up every single day, and I focus on growth in all areas of my life. And that's that's health, wealth, relationship, and everything else in between. Uh, because without growth and without bettering myself every day, then what am I? So these people that are stagnant and are afraid to kind of reach their goals or reach to the next level – there's something deeper that they need to figure out, right? Uh, but but I encourage them before they even figure it out, just to embrace that fear and take that next step. Sometimes we look at our end goal and we go, oh my God, that's so intimidating. Like how the hell am I going to get there, right? How, how am I going to become the next Gary V if that's your thing? Or how am I going to become the next Simon Sinek? How am I going to make $10,000 from a stage when I speak? Uh, how, how do I get there? Because I'm not even close. You know, all we can worry about is right now. Um, and the next step is never scary because we can see where we're going. But if we focus on the desk, the, the end goal, we're going to be terrified and we're not going to get there. So I think the biggest thing that I would tell anybody in those moments is like, if you're afraid of that end goal, just take the next step and see how you feel. And then all of a sudden you're going to add up all these steps. And you're going to go, holy shit, I'm at my destination. I've made it. And then that fear is gone. 
So all we can do is worry about right now and making that next right step. And, and you know, that fear really kind of dissipates. And uh, when you pointed out that quote about growth, I, I was literally thinking about a very similar quote that just like moved some words around. Like, if you're not growing, you're dying. And I just love this idea that um, it places an emphasis on the growth and that, as you mentioned, uh, as we're breathing, like if we're breathing, we're still alive. We still have a mission. We still have things that we can do. And fear is uh, one of the most common answers I get when it comes to what uh, you believe holds most people back from reaching their full potential. And uh, I feel like the fear, uh, it creeps around because of some of the past challenges we faced. We remember how we felt during those challenges. We don't want to reinvite those feelings. So uh, with that in mind, I'm wondering if you could share with us one big challenge that you faced in your journey and a powerful lesson you learned during that challenge. Yeah, so, uh, you know, it's very similar to the last question that I ask on my show, which is in your life, what's been your biggest moment of growth? Um, and that was when my mom passed away and my life shattered, right? Uh, this is the woman who was always my rock, the one that I would call and say, hey, I just hit this rock bottom. What do I do? Like when my business failed, I called her um, and my mom said to me, keep your head up, keep moving forward. Everything's going to be OK. Um, and I carry those words with me and I had to continuously reiterate that to myself when she did pass away because – um, you know, it was one of those things where I wanted to give up. I wanted to tap out and I knew that she wouldn't obviously want that. She wouldn't want me to do that. But then I also saw her life and I saw the fact that my mom hated herself and she dealt with depression and addiction. And I was like, how do I, how do I put something out in the world to fix this rock bottom? Um, and so in those moments of, feeling like you need to give up or you need to tap out. For me, it's really about focusing on my life has given me this opportunity. How do I turn it into something great? Uh, instead of life keeps knocking me down or, you know, life's so tough or woe is me. Everything that bad that happens to me in my life and it continues to happen, dude, like it's not perfect, right? So everything that happens to me in my life that's bad, I go, my life is currently giving me an opportunity. I may not know what the opportunity is right now, but I have to continuously move forward with my head up because everything is going to be all right. Um, because again, going back to what I said before, stagnation is dead. And I don't even know if I answered your question. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, again, I do love that idea of the uh, like stagnation is dead because, um, I mean, it, it, it again gives us this idea that we have to uh, utilize all the time that we have as effectively as possible and to truly make every single minute count. And um, one of the questions I, in, I enjoy asking because I this is tapping into my inner bookworm, uh, I'm wondering if you could share with us three great books that you believe will have a great impact on us. Yeah, um, so, so the first one is Who Moved My Cheese? Um, and who moved my cheese is a, the first self-help book that I ever read. Um, and, and it really focuses on like change is going to happen to you. It's about how you react to change, uh, which, which obviously relates to a quote that I love, which is life is 10% of what happens to you and 90% of how you react to what happens to you. Uh, so that's one who moved my cheese really easy read by the way. Like you can literally read it in one or two sittings. Um, the second one is, uh, the secret. And I, I think the secret is the first step to a larger key. Um, so the secret says what you believe will will become. It's not necessarily true. It's about what you focus on. Your actions start to generate that. But but I think that concept is really cool. And the third one is the last lecture. And the last lecture um, is something that when I read it, uh, it made me start to realize my mortality. Um, and I had to really start focusing my life on what legacy am I leaving behind to my friends, my family, and now to the world with my podcast, it really shifted my mindset and really helped me get to that point of giving instead of taking all the time. Um, and so those are the books, uh, Who Moved My Cheese, The Secret, and The Last Lecture. Justin, thank you for sharing those great book recommendations. The Links to those books and the show notes will be over at markaberti.com slash E141. And before we wrap up this episode, I'd like to flip the tables a little bit. So, Justin, I've asked you several questions throughout our time together, but 
What do you believe is one question that we need to be asking ourselves more often? Am I leaving the people I come in contact with better than what they were before they met me? And I think if you ask yourself that, it completely shifts every interaction you have, every relationship you have, because at the end of the day, it is about how much value you can bring to people around you. Justin, thank you for sharing with us that really powerful question. And um, I've seen like it was sort of like you were leading into that question based on everything else that you were saying, that idea of better serving the people who you come in contact with. And thank you for sharing all of your great insights throughout our time together and If you guys want to learn more about Justin and you guys want to start your own podcast, you can head over to beginpodcastingnow.com where he'll help you launch and grow your own podcast. And he also does coaching and he's actually going to offer a free 20-minute coaching session with the first 10 people who email him, justin at growthnowmovement.com. So If you just say something like, I heard you on the Breakthrough Success Podcast, he'll know who you are, and he will offer you that free 20-minute coaching session. Justin, I can't thank you enough for being a great guest on the show. Thank you for sharing all of your great insights with us today. Mark, thank you so much, man. This was a lot of fun, dude. I uh, I wish you all the best of luck going forward. Thank you. How does over 100 retweets per day sound to you? My free ebook, 27 Ways to Get More Retweets on Twitter, has you covered. I use the methods within this ebook to get over 10,000 retweets every single quarter. To learn more and get access to this free resource, visit markbirdie.com backslash 